Hey guys, it's Duval and welcome back to the channel! Yay! Okay, so this is about the third time I'm trying to film this. Twice already, I have filmed it almost to the end, battery dies. Filmed it almost to the end, battery dies. Yes, Saturday morning, super early. I'm already like sweating and exhausted and I'm about to lose my energy. So let's try this one more time. <laughs> Okay guys, so as you might can see, my eyes and my bags are just uh, hanging out today. So they're gonna be a part of this video. My crow's feet or whatever these are called here are gonna say hello once or twice. I am gonna try to keep my energy up. This is like the third video into this whole little season and I'm already about to fall apart. Let's see how this goes. With that being said though, today I just wanted to come on here and talk again about something that just is important to me in design. And so while I got to like rant about light bulbs last week, I wanted to talk to you guys about something else that I find kind of an oversight of a lot of client projects that I go on. And it's not necessarily a mistake by the client, but I often find that this is something that either people don't really care about, ain't nobody got time for that, or they feel like I can just pick anything and it doesn't really like impact the space. And I feel like area rugs, at least for me, is one of the biggest things that I use, but also is really my starting point for any room. I always lay the area rug out first. It is the easiest way to create a cohesive space to make everything feel like it's connected more than probably anything else in the room at this point as far as my design goes. So today I want to talk to you guys about two simple things about airy rugs. That's going to be size and then we're going to talk about colors and patterns I guess. So I guess we'll talk about those two things. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the size of an area rug. Area rugs come in uh, pretty general standard sizes. You have your 2x3s, your 3x5s, your 4x6, your 5x8, your 6x9, I think, 8x10s, 9x12s, and 10 x 4 For most vendors, they're going to offer a size within that range, generally. They may offer five of those sizes, or five of those different sizes, or they may offer a rug in only two of those sizes. But for the most part, if you are ever shopping for a rug, you're going to hear those simple numbers um, that's going to basically be what vendors find to be optimal sizes for most rooms. Now, when I'm talking about sizes also, there are really just three spaces that I want to talk about today, which is your living room, or maybe your family room, you call it, your bedroom, and your dining room. And so those are the three areas that I am more cognizant of the size of the rug that I'm choosing, my placement, etc. So let's first start with your family room. In those areas, the biggest thing to think the biggest thing to think about is that wherever your conversation spaces are gonna be, an airy rug is a good idea to place there. And then whoever is a part of the conversation, speaking of the furniture pieces, they should be partially on the rug so they are part of the conversation space. So it's like saying this, if I go into a room and I wanna have a conversation with some people, anyone that I want a part of the conversation, I'm gonna ask them to be on the rug, right? And so wherever they are seated, <clears throat> Is this already not making sense? Let me try Let me try this one more time. If I go into a room and I want someone to have a conversation with me and I have an area rug there, we're all kind of like on the area rug. So, uh, speaking metaphorically, of course, um, we want everyone to pretty much participate in the conversation, but I don't want anyone to kind of like overtake the conversation because we're all there together to hang out. It's the same for um, like product pieces. You want all the products to touch the area rug and sit on the area rug, but you don't want any particular piece to be fully on the area rug taking over the whole conversation. So when you're thinking about a family room, you often have the general pieces. Let's say your sofa, your accent chair, accent chair, and maybe a cocktail table. And so you want all of those pieces to sit on the area rug, but not fully sit on it or overtake the space. So I would recommend about 50 to 75% of that particular item to be on the area rug, not 100%. So you don't want the entire sofa, the front legs and the back legs to sit on the, the, the rug. You don't want the accent chair, both the front legs and the back legs to sit on it. It's a general rule. Is it 
Is it always correct for every space? No. Are there exceptions to that rule? Absolutely. Do other designers have different opinions about it? Of course. This is just kind of how we think about it. Again, everyone's a part of the conversation. No one's really taking over the entire thing. Everyone's just there hanging out, being awesome and cool, like all of you viewers who are watching us today. Okay, so as far as sizes for your bedroom goes, really it's just pretty simple. Just put the airy rug under the bed. And if you have nightstands on the side, I usually try to make it wide enough so that it kind of matches the the nightstands. Sometimes it may be a little longer, sometimes maybe a little shorter depending on the size you choose. But that's about as far out as wide as I want to go. I normally don't have the area, excuse me, I normally don't have the nightstand sitting on the area rug. I actually don't have those pieces touching. It's just right in front of it and then it just covers the entire the rest of the bed. If you have an end of bed bench, I usually try to make sure that is on top of the area rug itself. And that is probably what I find to be most optimal for those spaces. Pretty simple. When you're thinking about a dining room, so this is a little tricky because everybody has different opinions about this. And this is also within the design community. I think everyone thinks differently about it. For the most part, if your chairs are sitting under the table, you just wanna make sure your chair is fully on top of the area rug, which is different from the family room, right? Like everything needs to be like half or three quarters way on it. In the dining room, everything needs to be on that, okay? Also, when you actually move the chair back from the table, so say you're getting up, you're moving the chair, I still want your chair to sit on the area rug there because we don't want it like coming off the table. Bruh. Excuse me, we don't, I hope your chair is not on the table. Like if it's on the table, that's a whole nother conversation to have. So. Um, when you pull the chair back away from the table, you want the chair to still be sitting on the rug. Now, for some rooms, when you have this where the area rug is in the middle of the room and then there's enough space for your chair to still, still sit on it when it's pulled out, sometimes that rug can feel too big for the space. It almost feels like the, it's the entire room. And so I think there's a fine line between choosing you know, which rugs work. And I think it really depends on just the space and it depends on, you know, um, the design aesthetic that you're going for. Cause if the rug seems really big and it's going closer to the wall, but then you have a bureau, not, not a bureau. Again, what is happening today? <laughs> if you have a bureau in your um, dining room, I mean, I'm not judging you. Sometimes I guess you could use a bureau. Well, anyways, those pieces are often called a credenza, a sideboard, a buffet, buffet, or whatever you want to call it. So if you have one of those in the room, I don't necessarily want that sitting on the rug. So that's why I don't want the rug too big and too wide. But at the end of the day, I think that comes down to, you know, what's in the room, how the rest of the room looks. Excuse me. Y'all, I'm already, this is my third video in. I am like, this is not working out. <laughs> this is not working out. What is happening? Okay, keep, okay, Side, sidebar, here we go, sidebar. <laughs> um, when I was filming all the other videos, it's funny because I was so particular about content. I wanted to make sure like everything was concise, everything was clear when I had Marcus here. I was making sure that like, you know, we do one or two takes and like that's the whole video because I'll practice and rehearse. I have not rehearsed for these videos, as you can clearly see. I'm not even sure I am making sense, but I'm just gonna keep moving, okay? Yay! Yay! <laughs> um, I think that's all that needs to be said about sizes, right? So for a family room, you just want it big enough so that all the pieces, you know, sit halfway to three quarters on it. You don't want it to sit the full way. For the bedroom, you want it to cover the bed, but hit where the nightstands are, but not have the nightstand sit on it. And then for the dining room, you want it so that the chairs, when it's pushed under the table, as well as when they're pulled out, that they are still sitting on the dining room rug. Let's go to the next topic. Okay, so next we're talking about color and pattern. Now, this is going to be, it's not controversial because these are airy rugs. This is not something that serious. We're not talking about Black Lives Matter right now. But um, I'm not a particular fan of choosing Actually, let's back up. Okay, when looking and going into client spaces, what I often find or what they tell us quite often when we bring up the conversation about airy rugs is that they always want it to be something fun and they want it to have a lot of color and they want it to be like this and that and yada, yada, yada. And I'm always like, let's scale back. 
So oftentimes clients want to introduce colors into a room. And so there is this concern that they don't want to put too much. There's this concern that they are um, not sure how to introduce the colors. They don't want their walls dark or they don't want to um, have everything like a bright colored sofa. So they feel like the safest way to do it is to put color into the area rug. And I get that and I understand that kind of concept, but because there are generally 50, 100, 1,000 different pieces inside of your actual room, there are so many other ways to introduce more life and to be more dynamic within the space rather than just an area rug. And I feel like it's always kind of that I don't know, it almost feels like that safe thing for them to do. It's like, okay, I'm gonna invest in this space. Let me buy something because the area rug is very large and so it'll cover a lot of space. So if I put a cool pattern or if I put a lot of color into it, it's gonna make my room feel so much more fun and I can make this one investment and it's just this thing that's there. And I don't think that's a good approach. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, like, I'm not thinking that at all, but it often feels like the thought that the clients are having that they're not really expressing well. And I, again, I get it, but I kind of want to explain some things about color and pattern texture, I guess, for area rugs. So I'm not a big fan of having these graphic prints on the ground. I'm not a big fan of having so much going on on the ground, especially if there are a lot of pieces in the room. Now, if you have some type of Scandinavian design or some Japandi or Japandi or whatever that's called, but you have a very minimalist look to it, I understand that you may want an area rug that kind of has a lot of pattern, a lot of texture because all of your upholstery and your window treatments, everything else is a little bit more muted. I get it. But if you have like anything else that's brightly colored, there's a lot of competition when you have a lot of print and pattern on the floor. Also, it kind of does just like what I was trying not to do with the living room sizing. I don't want one thing in the room taking over the conversation. And oftentimes when I go into clients' houses, especially if it's a large rug that has a big print, that's all I can see. That's the first thing I can see. It seems like it's just clashing with everything or it seems like it's having too much fun by itself and it's not including anybody else. Now, as a side note as well, you know, if you're more of a, like a maximalist or if you're a person who likes to have like color everywhere, texture everywhere, pattern everywhere, and it's not as noticeable that that's not the only thing that's like screaming and blaring at you, I get it, that makes sense. Uh, and I'll try to put up a picture here somewhere. But if you are the type where not everything is like so loud and so bold, having one big loud, loud bold thing on the floor it's not working for you. And it's probably more distracting than you probably think or you're giving credit to it. So when thinking about airy rugs, I'm not opposed to having color on the floor. I'm not opposed to having pattern on the floor. I'm not opposed to having texture on the floor. But I think there are just simple ways that you can have it a little bit more muted, where the colors are infused, the textures are infused, but it doesn't feel like it's just one big bold print here and there that's just kind of bringing your eye to the floor every time you walk by it, every time you see the room, your eye goes directly to the floor that has this big print, this big pattern. I think along this journey, my objective is to kind of teach you to design the entire space. We are not, well, I guess I'll start with this now. You know, one of the things I constantly tell my clients, and I will definitely probably bring back up here, is that there are two different kind of approaches to design. There is the client way to design, and then there's our way. And so generally with clients, they are product-based. They are focused on the product itself. We're focused on concept, cohesion, and how everything else works together. So again, when you're product-based, you're thinking to yourself, oh, I love this piece. I love this rug. I love this chair. I love this lamp. I love this, you know, curtain. And then you try to put everything in the room that you love. And I get that. That makes sense. But that's actually not the objective when we design. We design based off concept. We design based off cohesion. How does this work with this over here? Is there a thread between the colors or the textures or the, the mood that it's evoking? And I had mentioned this in our designer's dish, which I'll post. Oh, yeah. Nice little plug in there. Check out designer's dish if you haven't seen it yet. Okay. Um, so, so when uh, thinking about concept, you know, inevitably, if you ever watch anything on HGTV or any type of like design show, you know, on the big reveal, the clients always come in the room and they'll say things like, oh my God, I, I would have never picked that artwork. Or, oh my God, I would have never put, you know, 
those colors together. Because separately, they don't like the piece. Separately, apart from the concept, they're not sure how it's gonna make sense. But for us, we've already thought that through. That was the objective is to place it in here, even though it was not the most ideal for you separately, it works within the context of the space. And so it's the same way with pattern and texture and colors on the floor. I am not opposed to it, but you have to make sure that it is going to work within the space. Side note, I keep forgetting about this too. Um, I often have seen a lot of clients who will buy an airy rug where the size of it, it doesn't touch any of the furniture. And I just think that is so weird. And it's so funny because I'm like, that's the first thing I'll notice is that every little piece is an island to itself. Like the chairs over here, the sofas over here, the the coffee table or the cocktail table and the, the airy rug is sitting on the floor having a time of their lives. And then like, nobody else is a part of it. So don't have an area rug that's too small. So anyways, I think that's it. I think I'm just gonna go because I'm so nervous that this thing is gonna shut off again and I have to go through this again. Now, obviously I didn't talk about like textures completely. I didn't talk about the different types of materials you can use. I didn't talk about any vendors. Maybe I'll talk about that at another period. But for now, again, for those of you who are just designing your own spaces, you're thinking about, you know, practical ways and tips and you're following along on this journey, the biggest two things I want you to, again, remember is just size. Make sure all the t pieces are touching. I'm gonna put some links down below in the comment section or in the description section to give you some other companies that talk about how to select an airy rug. And then I want you to just think about color. Of, co of course, add that color, bring in that texture, bring in that pattern, make it fun. But I think just make sure it's not taking over the entire room. It's not, to, it's not the center of every conversation. And I think you guys will be safe. So until the next video, I am hoping, I need, I need some prayers. I know I got some prayer warriors out there. <laughs> I need some prayers that this goes better. And let's just see what happens next time. Until then, see you guys.